Okay guys, here's another FML video coming right at you from my humble abode. <laughs> so today we're going to get on the hard pressing issue that has unfolded in the past week. The Syrian bombing and what that could mean for America and the world as a whole. Because you know there's those people out there who think it's going to be World War III. And there's people who are reacting on both sides. And me personally, I don't think the action was that bad. He didn't kill anybody. Yes, 60 rockets was not was really too much to ask. But, I mean, he leveled the base that gassed all those people in Syria. And apparently they didn't even do anything to stop the firing from happening like like at least the Russian government or Syria so it's really confusing I heck I, I don't even think anybody in the, even the top levels of either of the three governments know what the fuck is going on down there Syria is just a really bad thing and it started off as Obama's problem now it's become Trump's problem because there are people going to be wanting them to go in there regardless. And there are Syrians who want them to go in there. Like Syrians who are just do good citizens that are just tired of the bullshit going on there and it's citizens dying. So we'll try to navigate that. Alright, so a few, few days ago, the Syrians, we don't know who in the Syrian government or if it was Assad, who probably was Assad, basically gassed a bunch of people. He killed like 50 people, I think. Injured a heck of a lot more. I don't, I haven't looked at the stats in a little while, so I don't remember everything, but he killed, he killed quite a lot of people. So... In response to that, Trump said that there would be... I mean, this was right after Trump said that overthrowing Assad wouldn't be an option they would be exercising. So, I mean, technically, you could see it as, like, a point of weakness for Trump. And uh, Assad saw that as, like, an opportunity to show his power if it was Assad. And so... After right after Tr the attack, Trump said that he would bomb, not bomb, that he would seek action against the Syrian government for what happened. And while this very well could have been an ISIS orchestrated thing, I highly doubt it because it came from a freaking airbase. So, yeah, very strange. So anyway, Trump bombed the airbase that apparently also was protecting a Christian village, ironically, from attack from attacks from ISIS. Which is a little weird to me. Very suspicious. I need to look up on it. There's there's been a lot of debate in circles, certain circles about whether this was a warranted attack, or whether it was an act of lunacy, or if this could help bring America back up on the world stage since we've been sucking in the Obama and Bush years. And I have a really... Yeah, I'm taking Ben's view on it. I think this, and from the, uh, I'm gonna read some stuff from, uh, Incredible Hulk. I think it was good Trump that tri that did that because I mean, it had to be shown that that type of shit wouldn't be tolerated. 
So I'm glad that Trump did that in some aspects. But there are cons. We have the... Ooh, I love this. Punt. Okay. I got a school. But yeah. The cause is this can provoke Russia towards future involvement against the US military. Which would suck. Well it could bring about World War Three, yada yada yada. You can make a lot of World War One connections with this. Me being with this as an me being a hopeful historian. I see a lot of the connections. But I honestly don't think this is gonna to lead to World War. I mean this is just one incident and it will hopefully stay isolated. And there's these talks between Russia and the U.S. to hopefully blow up Assad, right, just get rid of him, which would be good. Get rid of him. Oh, whoa. But yeah, there's a lot of bad you can get from this, this situation, and I'm hoping that this is just one isolated incident and it stays that way and if we can get Assad out of power that would be great and help take back Syria since Syria has been getting fucked in the ass for so long. But I know that's going to take some time. A lot of time. And I'm really hoping war doesn't come up that's part of it. It's gonna suck if it does. Like, a lot. And I'd rather not go into war. But I've had a lot of friends who lean more to the left than I generally like. That it's gonna be all- Oh, it's all Trump's fault that we got in World War Three. No. No. I mean, this is the thing we all feared from Trump and Hillary. The general election that if they, either one of them won, they would be getting a little bit. I don't think Trump wants to go over there. I mean, yes, what he did is what was weird since he's been trying to promote this America first thing that a lot of people on the left didn't like, and now they don't like that he's doing what Hillary Clinton wanted bombing air bases. Which is completely ironic in my eyes. And they won't acknowledge that. And I just don't get it. Like, what do they have to lose by agreeing with him? I mean, it's not like they're going to lose their whole freaking base. Just because you agree with Trump on one thing. Even when they do agree on Trump, as we've seen, this whole time, they won't they won't do anything to help. They're, they're being worse than the Republicans were in the Obama years. Like, the latter parts of the Obama years where they wouldn't approve any of this shit. But still, Republicans approved this shit. Democrats are doing nothing. They're being whiny little bitches about this whole thing. And here's the next point that I have on here. Is the Democrats in Congress are being the biggest bunches of bunch of pansies I've seen in the political arena in years. Well not years, ever. And I haven't been alive that long, so I haven't been able to really see Democrats being pansies that much. But they are being mighty bitches. But everything Trump does, even when they agree with him, they want to lie. And it, it infuriates me because, I mean, they were always complaining about the Republicans not compromising with Obama on anything. And they're not compromising with Trump on anything, even when they agree with him. They're like, oh, this is the change to cheat a healthy democracy, which is a, an argument. Republicans use, which actually is a good argument, but they ha I don't think mi Trump only has a 9% approval rating from Democrats. 9%. I don't know how why this hasn't changed. Apparently with this big thing in Syria, his approval ratings actually jumped to 43%, which I think is a high since before the inauguration. So, I mean, that's good for Trump, and 
I honestly believe Good Trump is the one that attacked her. I mean, if you watch his speech, uh, when he, uh, right after he gave his explanation as to why he bombed the airbase, he sounded soulless. He sounded bitter. Well, not bitter. He sounded like he was sad. And I think it was like the big thing that got him was the children. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like Obama was with the children. I mean, Obama, he was naturally deceptive. Trump can be too, but the way he talked was weird. It was so unlike him. He sounded extremely sad. And I haven't, I don't think I've ever heard a president since maybe Gerald Ford or Jimmy Carter sound so sad when giving a speech. Because Gerald Ford, he even addressed the Congress to try to send weapons to the South Vietnamese government in the final days of the Southern Vietnamese government. And they were, and the Democrats, since they had both houses, were being money, money as hell. And they didn't do anything. He, he begged them on the Senate, I think it was the Senate of the House floor, to help those people in South Vietnam who were getting fucked by the Viet Cong for breaking the Treaty of Paris. They didn't do anything. And that's what I think the Democrats are going to try to do here, is not do anything to help the people that are being oppressed in the Middle East, and big thing fits with, you know, Islam. They're not fixing the problem that women and gays face, or any minorities face, in the Islamic world. So I'm just, I don't know what their end game is here, and it really pisses me off. I, I, I generally try to predict things, I, I, I try, I really do, but it, But right now, I'm just stumped. I don't know what they're the Democrats are trying to do. I've never seen a party so unanimously just reject the leader of the country. It's crazy. Any ships caught in a slip space bubble would be pulled through. Light bridge activated on approach. We're definitely being led somewhere. Alright, so anyway. This whole Syrian problem and Trump and the Republicans. Trump should have gone to to get. He should have gotten approval from Congress before he did this. That's the big thing. Chief. He should have. Technically, in the war powers, he can do this, but the proper way he should have done it by going through the Congress first. Hopefully, if he does anything else like this, he can go through Congress. It's, this whole situation is really complex it's, because if Trump plays this like a 4D like 4D chess, he could be he could be doing all the stuff he wants to do in mainland America, and then help overthrow Assad and destroy ISIS all in the same loop, which would be really smart of him to do if he does it the right way. And considering this is also coming. And politically, this is great for Trump because, I mean, not only is his approval rating rising slightly, he, <laughs> this is also coming off the Susan Rice thing where she was basically saying, hey, unmask people. So this is really good for Trump. As long as he keeps his mouth shut, he keeps doing, identify yourself, doing what he wanted to do in the primaries that wasn't stupid, I think. We can. I think America stands a pretty good chance of being in his former glory, maybe even in the Reagan years, or early first Bush. I'm really hoping for that. I'm hoping it's like the Reagan years, or at least the first two years of Bush. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't want. I don't want Bill Clinton years. Ugh. I mean, I think a lot of people don't want to know the Clinton in the White House, that's why they voted Trump. So it's really funny. 
And as long as Hillary Clinton stays in the woods, annoying Bigfoot and the other fantasy animals because of, because of that, she can just stay with them. Just annoy them and stay out of the public sphere. Maybe. Just maybe. We can get out of this better than we were before we got into it. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can, probably end it in the next five minutes. Uh, so I want to end this off with the Democrats, with, the, with Congress, the whole congressional situation. What I want from Congress, I want them to compromise. I know I don't want the... I don't want the freaking Democrats writing everything. I don't want this. I want a full repeal of Obamacare. This is, this is one of the big things that I want from Congress. So a full repeal of Obamacare. Work with Trump and House Senate Dem House Democrats, House Republicans work with each other, Senate Democrats, Senate Republicans work with each other. It's another big thing. If Trump can do, if Trump can somehow pull a Reagan and unify both parties, that would be perfect. It would be really perfect. But I highly doubt that's going to happen because if you have people like Chuck Schumer or uh, Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren might be assholes, asshats, if you will, about everything. And I highly doubt we're going to get anywhere because they stall, 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 stall. That's all they do. That's all they've ever done. Bernie Sanders... He isn't helping either. And, uh, and Stephen Crowder did this good thing about the uh, clean energy plan, saying Trump's anti-science for wanting to get rid of it. You called him anti-science, but yet your party platform and the state of Vermont, which from which Bernie's from, believe in the existence of 31 genders. Or 30-something genders. <laughs> I mean, the irony is... <laughs> Bon appétit. The, 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 it's there. It's there. It's, and it's funny. So, that's those are the big points that I want from the from the Congress that we have right now. Is to compromise, but not so much that we go into regressive territory. Because I know that is a risk we have going into 2018. Is all the millennials that got that felt like they were screwed in the general election will come, turn around, run for office. I mean, I, ha I think there's one guy in my home state of Texas, he's a punk rocker who's running against Ted Cruz. And I'm like, no, no, he, and I highly doubt he's going to beat Ted Cruz because Ted Cruz is too awesome. I'm about to start making Ted Cruz stuff in my videos just for the hell of it because he's so awesome. So I mean, <laughs> no. Keep the progressives out of Congress. That's something that the, the growing conservative media is going to have to do. And YouTube is one of the last bastions of conservative media anyway, other than independent websites. So, I mean, it's going to be all hands on deck. for this one. And I encourage you to check out these people. I want you to check out Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder, Matthew, Matt Christian, I think that's what his name is, Matt Christian. Uh, Andrew Clavin, Mark Levin, all these other people on advice for helping get through, or at least forming good opinions on what we should expect in the near future, and how well we can maneuver it in the spectrum of today's crap fest that is politics. Alright, so I kept that short sweet to the point, that's a 20 minute video, alright. So I will thank you all for watching. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I hope you liked that little Chevelle beginning of the video. So, I'll see you later. And goodbye. Have a good day. Don't die.